so good morning to all of you and uh, today's topic is uh, benign breast diseases this is a vast topic uh, and the time assigned is just one lecture so we will try to cover uh, in one lecture so slide is not moving yes so vast majority of the lesions that is to the tune of 90% of the lesions uh, which occur in the breast and they are benign however much concern is given to cancer the breast because it is the most can, uh, common cancer in the females benign breast diseases uh, are fairly common uh, a problem in females because up to 30% of the women Uh, in their lifetime, they suffer from one or the other type of the benign breast disease. Incidence of the benign breast diseases that uh, begins to rise from second decade and peaks in the fourth or fifth decade. Now, after the menopause, um, the benign breast diseases are rarely seen because the cancer breast is the most common cancer in females. So. the aim of treatment in uh, benign diseases is first of all to exclude the cancer and once the cancer has been excluded then uh, treat the remaining benign conditions coming to the definitions uh, so benign breast diseases uh, is an umbrella term the term benign breast diseases and encompasses a heterogeneous group of lesions that may present with wide range of signs and symptoms or may be detected as incidental finding broadly benign breast diseases can be classified uh, divided into five groups number 1 is developmental abnormalities number 2 inflammatory conditions number 3 epithelial stromal proliferations and fibrocystic changes number 4 benign breast neoplasms number 5 miscellaneous conditions now coming to the first um, group that is developmental abnormalities and the various um, conditions uh, are ectopic breast congenital hyperplasia of the breast amesia polythelia athelia congenital retracted nipple in the second group that is the inflammatory conditions we have uh, mastitis and uh, the various types of mastitis acute bacterial mastitis granulomatous mastitis mastitis of the infants so commonest is the acute bacterial mastitis and if the acute bacterial mastitis is not treated with the antibiotics then it will give rise to abscess formation and if abscess is not drained um, and it is inadequately treated then it can give rise to antibioma or sometimes uh, abscess can even rupture the second inflammatory condition is duct ectasia or the periductal mastitis and the third is the recurring uh, subareolar abscess so this is also known as juskas disease and uh, fourth is monders disease and uh, third group uh, of the benign breast diseases is, uh, is the epithelial stromal proliferations and fibrocystic changes now this occurs due to the um, uh, the cyclical effect of the hormones estrogen progesterone prolactin uh, during the reproductive periods so because of this uh, action of these hormones uh, Um, there are various physiological and histological changes occurring in the breast and they give rise to various uh, brand conditions um, these are fibrocystic changes sclerosing adenosis moderate to severe ductal hyperplasia duct papilloma atypical ductal hyperplasia atypical lobular hyperplasia juvenile diffuse hypertrophy of the breast the fourth group uh, benign neoplasms in which we have fibroadenoma pilar is tumor lipoma and hamartoma in the miscellaneous group uh, you can have galactosil galactoria traumatic fat necrosis and gynecomastia now 
depending upon the uh, risk of breast cancer from benign conditions so these uh, bbds can be grouped into uh, three groups um, so one is that non proliferative lesions where there is no risk of malignancy second is the proliferative lesions without atypia where there is a relative risk of cancer to the tune of 1.5 to 2 and third is the proliferative lesions with atypia where the risk of cancer breast is to the tune of uh, 4.5 to 5. So in the first group um, that is the non-proliferative lesions where there is no risk of uh, uh, breast cancer the various uh, lesions are the cyst in the breast duct ectasia different types of mastitis, breast abscess, fibrocystic changes and traumatic fat necrosis. The second group that is the proliferative lesions without atypia where the, um, the risk of cancer is to the tune of 1.5 to 2. The various benign conditions are fibroadenoma, duct papilloma, sclerosing adenosis, moderate to severe ductal hyperplasia. Third group is the proliferative lesions with atypia where there is maximum risk of cancer that is the tune of 4.5 4 to 5 and these are uh, there are two conditions in this group atypical, atypical ductal hyperplasia, atypical lobular hyperplasia. <coughs> now there is another classification for the brain disorders of the breast that is the ND classifications. Now mm, the background of this classification is that this classification is based upon the concept that uh, most of the benign disorders of the breast and they are aberrations in the normal development and involution. So in according to this concept most of the benign conditions of the breast they are not true diseases but they are in fact aberrations in the normal development and involution. Various clinicians have given various terms um, to these disorders in the form and that is fibroadenosis, fibrocystic disease, mastopathy, chronic mastitis. Uh, all these terms are confusing because uh, these terms they do not correlate with the um, clinical findings and the histological findings. So in 1987, Ali Hughes um, uh, from Cardiff Breast Clinic, uh, University of Wales in the UK, he coined this classification. Uh, that is the ND classification. So background of this classification is that breast is a dynamic structure that undergoes changes throughout uh, women's uh, reproductive life and superimposed upon this uh, there are cyclical changes throughout the menstrual life of the females. So cyclical exposure of the breast to estrogen and progesterone during a reproductive period causes various morphological changes in the breast in the form of fibrosis, uh, uh, cyst formation, ductal lobular hyperplasia, adenosis, papillomatosis. So these are the various changes at the microscopic level occurs in the um, breast during a reproductive period. Now, according to the ND classifications, the reproductive period of the breast is divided into three stages. Um, first is the early reproductive period, uh, where there is development of the breast and this period is from 15 to 25 years of age. Second is the mature reproductive period, uh, 25 to 40 years of age. And third is the involution, that is after the menopause. Now, according this, this ND classification is two dimensional uh, classifications. Uh, um, so there is uh, um, vertical dimension and there is horizontal uh, dimension. Now, this uh, vertical dimension uh, reflects the uh, reproductive period of the uh, breast. Um, so, there is early reproductive period uh, where there is development of the breast. Then there is mature reproductive period where there is uh, um, changes in the breast because of the cyclical uh, release of the hormones and then there is uh, involution period. And um, while the horizontal dimension, it covers the spectrum from normality 
through aberrations to disease. If you see uh, the first column, first um, this uh, uh, row, so first this early reproductive period uh, where there is breast development. So normal process is lobule formation and stroma formation. But if there is aberration in this uh, normal process and then there can be fibroadenoma where there is hyperplasia of the lobules or there can be juvenile hypertrophy where there is uh, abnormal growth of the breast mainly stroma and clinically the lump is uh, felt and um, see if it is giant fibroadenoma that is a disease. So by using this uh, two-dimensional approach most of the brain conditions can be fitted into this uh, framework. Now, uh, this slide uh, shows uh, the um, developmental abnormalities that is polymasia or the ectopic breast or the supernumerary breast or the accessory breast. This is the most common um, anomaly um, uh, abnormality in the breast development uh, um, that is the accessory breast. Uh, accessory breast can be located anywhere in the milk line but um, the commonest location is in the axilla or in the chest wall and um, this accessory breast also starts functioning during lactation or during pregnancy. This slide shows um, accessory nipple and the primary nipple shows inversion that is the congenital inverted nipple. This shows amasia where there is uh, absence of uh, the breast. Now this slide shows, uh, in this slide, uh, uh, acute bacterial mastitis and breast abscess. Acute bacterial mastitis is the most common type of the mastitis. Um, this is also known as lactational mastitis. Um, this occurs usually within three months of uh, uh, postpartum and uh, this uh, etiology is, is improper nursing technique leading to stasis of the milk and, uh, and congestion or um, there can be and the source of infection is also cracked <coughs> nipples or source in the nipple and the source of organism basically is the oropharynx of the infant and there is ascending infection um, from the lactiferous ducts to parenchyma and the commonest organism is Staphylococcus aureus. <coughs> Initially, there are signs of acute mastitis, um, means there are signs of inflammation, but if that mastitis is not treated, then abscess is uh, formed. So clini clinical signs of inflammation so on the right side, that um, inflammation is localized, so abscess is uh, formed. Now, in the initial stage when there is uh, um, cellulitis, there is uh, mastitis, that condition should be treated uh, with uh, antibiotics. And at the same time, uh, um, that evacuation of the milk from the affected breast is very, very important. It, uh, feeding from the affected side may, con may be continued or manual evacuation of the milk or evacuation with the help of breast pump is done. Now clinically at times it is difficult to differentiate between the cellulitis that is the mastitis stage and abscess formation because fluctuation sign is um, may not be elicitable early because of that uh, tenderness and uh, septa in the breast so we can go for the needle aspirations or ultrasound which can tell whether the abscess has formed or not and the treatment of the breast abscess is incision and drainage or sometimes even um, repeated aspirations with antibiotics can also be tried. And this antibioma, so antibioma it is the complications of the breast abscess uh, and this occurs when uh, inadequately drained breast abscess or when breast abscess is not drained but uh, treated with antibiotics. Uh, then this abscess is localized and it is encircled by thick fibrous wall and that is known as antibioma and this uh, abscess inside that fibrous uh, wall is uh, sterile and it mimics uh, carcinoma of the breast. So um, 
in the diagnosis there will be typical history of mastitis or abscess and, and then ultrasound fna fnac will and tell the diagnosis and treatment is excision of uh, antibiotic granulomatous mastitis so this is another type of the mastitis which is not so common and uh, this these are three types one is uh, infectious agent due to tuberculosis so tubercular granulomatous mastitis is the common idiopathic non caseatic granulomatous mastitis usually due to sarcoidosis is rare and foreign body material in silicon or paraffin which is used for augmentation and breast reconstruction by the plastic surgeons <coughs> so that can also give rise to uh, granulomatous mastitis so treatment is depending upon the cause for tubercular granulomatous mastitis treatment is anti tubercular therapy and for idiopathic non caseating steroids are used now this is mounder's disease this is the um, thrombophlebitis of the superficial veins of the breast and anterior chest wall um, the etiology is not clear probably uh, some say that this may be uh, due to trauma to the chest wall or to the breast and um, this this is seen as septal scar usually attached to the skin and when the arm is raised above then that skin over the breast is stretched and see when such condition is seen such condition is seen then we must rule out the underlying malignancy because sometimes underlying malignancy can give rise to this permeation of the lymphatics by the cancer cells so once cancer breast has been ruled out by uh, proper uh, um, breast examination mammography ultrasonography and uh, when pregnancy has been ruled out then treatment of mounder's disease is just conservative that is um, rest to um, the shoulder and arm and sometimes if there is painful then nsaids can be used <coughs> a ductectasia this now next is the ductectasia this is also called as periodontal mastitis so ductectasia is distinctive clinical disorder uh, which can present uh, with features of brown greenish zero sanguineous discharge from the nipple and there can be sub areolar mass uh, or there can be sub areolar abscess or this abscess may burst give rise to uh, fistula and uh, because of the fibrosis there can be retention of nipple so uh, this condition is usually confused with carcinoma of the breast uh, the underlying pathology is not uh, clear uh, but um, uh, the disease is much more common in the smokers and uh, it is thought probably that there is arteriopathy Uh, uh, that is the contributing factor for this uh, disease uh, so basically what happens that initially there is dilatation of one or more uh, um, lactiferous ducts which are uh, uh, <coughs> um these ducts which are um, filled with uh, this secretion that is the brownish greenish uh, um, uh, secretions now this stagnant fluid Uh, in the dilated ducts sets up irritant reaction in the surrounding tissues uh, leading to periodontal mastitis uh, and uh, then later on abscess formation which may rupture giving rise to the fistula formation and uh, eventually fibrosis results into slit like uh, retraction of the nipple so in the while managing this problem first of all uh, carcinoma of the breast must be excluded by mammography or ultrasonography and if required needle um, biopsy or cytology and once the carcinoma has been ruled out then antibiotic therapy can be uh, tried if uh, the condition does not settle then many times surgery is required where uh, um excision of all the major ducts 
uh, that is the head fields operation is uh, uh, done and now next is the recurring subareolar abscess so this is also known as Juskaz disease it is a rare bacterial infection of the breast that is characterized by a triad uh, and that triad is that um, cutaneous fistula in the uh, areolar region uh, thick pasted discharge from the nipple multiple recurrent memory abscesses now this disease is caused by schemis metaplasia of one or more lactiferous ducts and this metaplasia usually occurs towards the nipple uh, and the underlying cause is probably smoking so due to uh, schemis metaplasia keratin plugs are produced in this lactiferous ducts which will have stuck these ducts and the ducts um, and they get dilated secretions are collected which are infected and abscess is formed which will rupture outside forming fistula so treatment is surgical excision of the fistula and ducts once uh, the diagnose this carcinoma has been ruled out <coughs> Now, next condition is the um, breast cysts. Now, cysts within the breast parenchyma are fluid-filled epithelial lined cavities that vary in size from microscopic to large palpable masses which may contain fluid to the tune of 20 to 30 ml. The pathogenesis of the breast cyst is not, breast cyst is not uh, well understood, um, but but uh, a microscopy study sh has shown that uh, fibrosis at or uh, near the lobule combined with contained secretions result in unfolding of lobule and expansion of epithelial lined cavity containing fluid. So basically this changes, this is part of that um, say, um, um, during reproductive periods because of the cyclical uh, release of these hormones uh, various histological changes occur in the breast and the fibrosis fibrosis adenosis um, cyst formations so this fibrosis uh, near the lobule uh, will um, will obstruct this um, secretion of the lobule and which later on will give rise to cyst most of the cysts they are simple simple but rarely cyst can be complex. Complex means when there is solid component also. So when it is complex cyst, then um, there is risk of uh, cancer. So diagnosis of the uh, this cyst is um, confirmed by ultrasonography or um, uh, aspirations. So treatment of the cyst is that if it is solitary cyst, then uh, uh, can be aspirated. If um, they resolve completely and if the fluid is not blood stained and then no further treatment is required but if um, there is recurrence after aspirations then we can go for the re-aspirations but if there is residual lump or if the fluid is blood stained um, or uh, uh, if the cyst uh, uh, if the cyst reforms repeatedly um, then uh, a core needle biopsy or then a core needle uh, biopsy or excision of the cyst is to be uh, done uh, to rule out the uh, cast my breast now coming to the next uh, condition that is the fibroadenoma now fibroadenoma is the most common lesion of the breast uh, fibroadenoma is benign tumor composed of epithelial and stromal uh, tissue. Uh, usually, this is uh, single, but in 20% of the cases, it can be there can be multiple fibroadenomas. Usually, it is in the one breast, but uh, in 20% of the cases, it can be uh, in both the breasts. Peak incidence of the uh, fibroadenoma is uh, between 15 to 25 years of age. So, this is a disease of young age and it is not seen after menopause. Now, this etiology of the fibroadenoma is that it is thought to be hormone dependent and uh, formed from hyperplasia of the lobules. Now, conventionally, uh, this fibroadenoma is regarded as a benign tumor, but uh, as per the ND classification, um, it represents a group of hyperplastic lobules. Uh, so, 
according to Andy, this is not a disease, but this is uh, uh, called as the aberration of normal development and involution. Average size of the most of the fibroid nomans is between two to five centimeters. Grossly, uh, fibroid noma is well circumscribed, encapsulated, avoid mass with bosselated surface, and the cut surface shows firm and uh, gray white. Um, uh, this areas microscopically uh, the fibroadenomas uh, are two types intracanalicular and pericanalicular so different types of fibroadenomas uh, one is usual type of fibroadenoma which is less than 5 cm giant fibroadenoma when size is more than 5 cm or juvenile fibroadenoma it occurs at the puberty and complex fibroadenoma, which is associated with cysts or sclerosing adenosis or apocrine metaplasia. So clinically, fibroadenoma is a freely mobile uh, lump, uh, which is firm. Uh, also called, this is also called as uh, moss in the breast. Um, clinical examination, ultrasound, and uh, FNAC will confirm the diagnosis. Um, if it is small in size, then 30% of the cases, uh, uh, the fibroadenomas may reduce or even disappear in uh, two to four years. Uh, but in some patients, uh, it may uh, increase. <coughs> now, this if the fibroadenoma is small, um, they and they are not symptomatic, there is no pain, then they do not require any treatment. Uh, but if it is giant fibroadenoma, or if it is complex fibroadenoma, then that has a little risk of malignancy. <clears throat> so, let go to the next slide. The treatment of the fibroadenoma is excision, um, but uh, before excision, uh, carcinoma of the breast is to be ruled out. Now coming to the duct papilloma, uh, duct papilloma is a true polyp of the lactiferous ducts. Usually it is small, um, less than small, less than one centimeter in size, but rarely it can be uh, bigger in size. Um, mostly this uh, duct papillomas, they are solitary, but rarely can be multiple also. Uh, now this uh, duct papilloma, it occurs in main lactiferous ducts close to the areola, but rarely they can be located in the peripheral uh, breast parenchyma. It is a benign condition, but rarely there can be atypical hyperplasia or even uh, in-situ carcinoma in the duct papilloma. Clinically, this duct papilloma is felt as a small lump under areola with history of bloody discharge from the nipple. So again, when there is a history of discharge, bloody discharge from the nipple and there is a localized lump, and again, we have to rule out um, the uh, malignancy. So discharge cytology for the malignant cells to, is to be done. And then, of course, um, FNNC, mammography, ultrasonography to rule out the cancer. Treatment, if it is located um, uh, near the nipple in the area region, the treatment can be micro -ducectomy or excision of the duct papilloma. Another benign condition, traumatic fat necrosis. Mm, this occurs due to direct or indirect trauma to the breast, uh, not to the patient. Here it is mentioned patient. So trauma to the patient, uh, this uh, to the uh, breast. Now due to trauma to the breast, which may be direct or indirect trauma to the um, breast, uh, so there can be a rupture of the capillary. So capillary ooze due to trauma causes triglycerides in the fat to dissociate into fatty acids, which combined with calcium from blood resulting into saponification. And this saponification and um, fatty acids, they induce inflammatory reactions and later on a lump is formed. So this lump is more or less just like a lump of uh, antibiome, which is also confused. So this is also confused with the carcinoma of the breast. So this is a non-progressive lump and the diagnosis again by um, triple assessment that is clinical examination, um, then 
mammography, ultrasonography, and uh, uh, FNA, and treatment is excision of the antipyroma. Follow is tumor. <coughs> now, uh, so previously, uh, Commonly, this was referred as cystosarcoma phyloides uh, uh, because uh, grossly the tumor displays the features of uh, uh, sarcoma means that is that features of malignant sarcoma means uh, larger in size, uh, shiny uh, skin, uh, dilated overlying veins, but. Um, when we do the histology, so mostly it is benign. So hence the term cystosarcoma phyllides is misleading. So majority of the phyllides tumors, they are benign, but uh, um, some cases borderline um, uh, malignancy is there. That is, uh, they have potential for local recurrence. And rarely uh, phyllides tumor can be malignant with the metastatic potential. Phyllides tumors, uh, they are non-epithelial nucleasm of the breast. So clinically, uh, the phyllides tumors, they are um, relatively large in size, ranging from 5 to 30 centimeter. They occur in the premenopausal uh, females. Um, they are uh, well demarcated, has uh, bosselated surface, overlying skin is stretched and uh, has dilated veins and cut surface of the phyllides tumor shows leaf-like appearance. So this uh, phyllides term is derived from phylon which means leaf. So diagnosis again needle biopsy will uh, confirm the diagnosis with um, whether this is phyllides tumor or sarcoma or some other malignancy and in treatment if it is benign uh, phyllides tumor then local excision is sufficient if it is borderline then wide excision with the wide rim of uh, normal breast tissues uh, is uh, to be done and if it is malignant then mastectomy with the extra relief node section is to be done so this is the patient uh, she was uh, operated long back, I think 10 years back, uh, with the huge phyllides tumor and this is surgery being done and, uh, and this is softer surgery. Now lastly, uh, we will discuss breast pain, mastalgia uh, or other term is mastodynia. So breast pain is extremely common disorder and affects up to 77% of the females in their uh, lifetime. Now mastalgia is so common that uh, it is considered a part of normal bodily process rather than a disease by some people. But to see in, um, in uh, to the tune of 45% of the cases it may be severe uh, mastalgia. So, mastalgia uh, is two types. One is cyclical mastalgia and uh, second is non-cyclical mastalgia. Now, coming to this cyclical mastalgia, this uh, usually occurs a week prior to menstruation and uh, disappears when the menstrual flow is established. Uh, during Menstrual cycle by the action of the estrogen, progesterone and prolactin, uh, various um, changes occur in the breast and so the breast undergoes significant physiological, histological changes. Then there is um, so luminal cells of the uh, this, um, um, glandular cells, they produce uh, apocrine secretions and there is uh, edema of the stromal cells. So all these physiological, histological changes, they give rise to pain. Now this cyclical mastalgia, that is bilateral condition, but rarely um, only one uh, pain, can, pain can be there only in one breast, mainly occurs in the pain occurs in the upper outer quadrant and may relate to axilla and arms and if we examine the breast during pain it uh, may be tender or uh, lumpy. Non-cyclic nostalgia uh, that is not linked to the uh, menstrual cycle 
so pain in the breast independent of the uh, menstrual cycle so it does not vary with menstrual cycle maybe continuous or intermittent and it is usually unilateral non cyclical mastalgia is of two types one is true non cyclical mastalgia uh, this true non cyclical mastalgia is the condition when pain is from the breast tissue not linked to menstruation and another non cyclical mastalgia is extra mammary mastalgia and the the conditions which cause uh, this uh, uh, mastalgia is uh, the breast pain uh, can be due to musculoskeletal chest wall or shoulder conditions or tilt syndrome that is the costochondritis thrombophlebitis monders disease or even cervical spondylosis can uh, manifest as a pain in the breast but the true non cyclical mastalgia is when pain is non cyclical but the origin of the pain is from the breast tissue so various conditions give rise to the uh, true non cyclical mastalgia is one is idiopathic non cyclical tube mastalgia then fibrocystic changes ductectasia macrocyst in the breast large pendulous breast causing stretching of cooper's ligament and rarely even breast carcinoma uh, can also give rise to mastalgia and especially inflammatory breast cancer can give rise to uh, breast pain so coming to the treatment of cyclic mastalgia so uh, most of the patients uh, may not require treatment uh, uh, simple uh, reassurance is sufficient uh, that uh, we have to explain and the pay, explain to the patient that this um, this is not a serious problem there is no cancer and uh, this occurs because of the um, cyclical um, you know, this uh, fluctuation in the levels of the hormones uh, and uh, then is adequate support uh, with the from uh, braziers in daytime and soft uh, brazier during night time are really helpful and the patient should be advised to avoid um, caffeine and nicotine if there is an, uh, still pain then topical diclofenac uh, gel can be applied or uh, uh, oral estaminophen nsaids can be tried then people have tried even uh, evening primrose oil or vitamin b1 b6 b vitamin e but all these are controversial and in severe cases when patient is not responding then we can use uh, danazol tamoxifen and bromocriptin but these drugs uh, have lot of side effects now for extra memory non cyclical mastalgia uh, treatment is uh, by tackling the underlying uh, cause and for idiopathic non cyclical mastalgia we can and do the management according to the cyclic mastalgia so that is all um, thank you very much